Hi everybody, welcome to the second episode of Monday Sketching and Art Reflections. I really hope to find a better title for this series in the future, but so far I think it does justice to what I'm planning to do. I would like today to demonstrate and emphasize the importance of learning the foundations of drawing, that is, being able to draw geometric shapes in space and knowing how different surfaces respond to light. I'll be using my trusted ink in the container that you see here, diluted with some distilled water. That is because it makes the ink light better on the nib. And I'm going to be using also one of the most popular nib choices out there. That is the Zebra G nib. The mechanical pencil will be useful not only for the underdrawing, but also for measuring angles. This is a very important uh, technique that I've learned and you're going to see how useful it is. Now, in order to illustrate what I mentioned before about being able to draw different geometric shapes in space and understanding how different surfaces respond to light, I'm going to be using this beautiful art reference of a church from Crete, the island of Crete from Greece. And I'm going to be using the pencil, as you see now, to measure the angles and transfer them onto paper. This is a very useful art tip that I've learned from Ilya Mirochnik, who's an art instructor at New Masters Academy, an online platform where you can find a plethora of art courses taught by, I would even say, one of the best artists in the world right now. Now, I also believe it's highly important that if you never studied art in a formal environment, that you should know what to start with. So when I mentioned being able to draw geometric shapes in space, I also implied learning the theory of perspective. The theory of perspective is something that every artist should master. It's something that your eyes see naturally, but for your brain is self-implied. Therefore, it might seem a little bit difficult when you deal with it theoretically for the first time. I specifically chose this art reference because it's a very good example of a two-point perspective. Now, there's three main types of perspective. There's one-point perspective, where you look at an object from a frontal view. There's a two-point perspective, where you look at an object seeing two sides of it, as in the example uh, that I'm showing you right now. And then there's three-point perspective, which is a little bit more complicated. However, I don't find it that relevant for fine arts, rather more for architecture. Now, I'm not very concerned about drawing perfectly straight lines. And that is because I see this drawing as a mere exercise and I'm just trying to show you how I train my eye to interpret three-dimensional objects and transfer them on a two-dimensional surface, which is the paper. Um, I love drawing architecture, especially Byzantine architecture. Byzantine art and architecture are one of my main sources of inspiration and I really plan to do a future episode just about that. For the sake of time, you will see some excerpts of the whole process and time-lapse, otherwise you take way too long. Uh, and I'm going to give you a very short briefing so you know what to expect from this drawing from the very beginning. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to be talking throughout the video and I don't want you to go through that. So in short, what I'm doing right now is trying to mark all the possible angles that I observe on the reference photo. Afterwards, when I have a very good image of how the whole subject looks on the paper and I know exactly what I want, uh, I make some compositional choices already on the stage, removing some objects from the reference photo or adding some things. Usually the best way to, to go about a, a composition that is convincing and that is beautiful is to simplify things as much as possible and try to make decisions that read well to the eye but offer a minimum amount of information on the page. So try to convey as much as possible in as little as possible. The next step after, after finishing the underdrawing is inking. And when I do the inking, I start first with the outline. While outlining the drawing, uh, I really like to take my time to double check whether everything is right, whether the angles are right, whether the proportions are right, and uh, I'm trying to already mark the most important details. After I do that, I move on to filling in the shadow areas. And by filling in, I mean homogeneously hatching and cross-hatching the entire shadow area. Afterwards, I'm really trying to identify the areas of the darkest darks, mark them, and then move on to drawing the details in the shadow and then 
afterwards the details in the area that is hit by the light. At the very end I'll be checking my whole composition and maybe add some final touch-ups, maybe add some uh, hatching in the background to further emphasize the area in the light. And I think this is enough on my side. I hope you will enjoy this video and hopefully this will be helpful. See you next time. Bye!